My brothers, my sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will be not thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, See that you are not to be deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first. But it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead you, it will lead to your giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord. Lord. Last night as I was driving back to Nashua, I was wondering how many people might have discussed the gospel reading that I proclaimed. So often we can leave church and really forget about what the readings were. Although sometimes we can be physically present at a mass and still forget what was said or spoken about. But I don't think that's the case in today's gospel. You know, the gospel today, as well as that first reading from the book, the prophet Malachi, you know, it speaks of things that could be horrifying to us. Insurrections and earthquakes, famines, plagues, signs in the sky, arrest, persecution, execution of believers, predictions about the future, those catch our attention, especially when they seem to relate to our current situation. We can all admit that we're living in dangerous times, increasingly dangerous times, People talk about the possibility of war with Russia or China. We talk about use of nuclear weapons in Ukraine, growing threats to the well-being of our planet, widespread famine and drought 
in so many parts of our world, in a seemingly larger number of natural disasters. And if we're not aware, there are more Christians being tortured for their faith than ever before. However, Sunday's gospel does more than direct our attention to the current happenings or our troubled world and what may happen in the future. But in the gospel, Jesus gives his followers two challenges that can easily be missed amidst this riveting imagery. Now notice Jesus refused to predict details or provide clues for the time of a coming calamity. He says wars, earthquakes, pestilence, famine. While those were traditionally pers personified by the four apocalyptic horsemen who would come to announce the final judgment. I was very fortunate as a student many years ago now to have a professor, his name was Raymond Brown. He was a priest of Saint Sulpice, a renowned scripture scholar. But he suggested that the end of the world people, and we still run into them, Sometimes you might be at a street corner and somebody gives you one of those tracks about beware, be ready, right? But he says some of those people can do a valuable service for us by keeping the reality of the second coming before our eyes. We say Christ will come again. And prophets of doom in every century point to historical calamities, wars, revolts, and cosmic disasters, earthquakes and famines and pestilences, and signs in heaven, like an eclipse, uh, like eclipse or a comet. And they always say those are signs of the end time. But Jesus says, don't try to predict the end but live loyally, live lovingly in all situations, in all cases, because people will always think they figured it all out. And some will always be hostile to the gospel. But Jesus reminds us, instead of destroying us, because of who we are, because of our faith, our martyrdom, our death will bring us life eternal. And at the end of the discourse, Jesus gives this assurance, not a hair of your head will perish. God's saving purpose will certainly triumph because contrary to appearance, God always remains firmly in control. And finally, the way to glory is traveled more often through day-by-day -day endurance rather than isolated acts of heroism or great virtue. And you know that in your own lives. You do the day-by-day -day things that you're required to do. And that's the practical spirituality that each of us can live, embracing our current situation. And Jesus tells us that the persecutions and difficulties that we will face as his followers will give us a powerful opportunity to demonstrate our faith, our trust in him. As he tells us, it would lead to your giving testimony testifying to Christ and the church. And we live in an age where we can be ridiculed, especially in social media because of our beliefs. We can be labeled a bigot. 
We can be denied a promotion. We can be ostracized by non-believers and even persecuted. But again, this gives us an opportunity or opportunities to witness to our faith. And after all, it was the dramatic witness of the early Christians who remained faithful to Jesus Christ despite persecution and the threat of death that caused us to open our minds to the gospel. Tertullian, who was a father of the church, wrote in the second century, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. So at the end of the gospel, Jesus gives us a second challenge. He says, remain strong, remain resolute in your faith and trust in God no matter what's going on in your lives and by an extension, what's going on in our world. As Jesus says, by your perseverance, you will secure your lives. You will gain a place in heaven. Jesus says, everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The dramatic images in today's gospel catch our attention and even remind us of films dealing with the destruction of the world. But it's much more important that our attention be focused on Jesus this Sunday. We are to witness to him, no matter what the cost. We are to persevere in faith, and that leads to eternal life. Amen.